Okay. Good morning, students. After the completion of AIDS, then the next topic is cancer. Here, the study and the treatment processes of the cancers is termed as oncology. So, simply the study of cancer is known as oncology. Here, ancos, ancos, nothing but the tumors. Simply, the study of tumors is termed as oncology. So, what is cancer? Here. For, for example, when we are talking about a healthy person, that healthy person's body cells, this is normal body cell, this normal body cell undergo mitotic division and produce two daughter cells like this. When we compare to the sizes of these daughter cells, compared to this parental cell, the normal parental cell size is like this and newly formed cells after the completion of mitotic division their sizes are very small. After some days, what happened here? This normal sized, newly formed daughter cells, they gradually increases in size like this. After a few days, the normal daughter cells increases in size and they attain maximum size like this. Now this process is called as cell growth. Now this cell growth is highly regulated in a normal persons. If there is no regulation, what happened? Continuously, this growth is growing on. There is no stoppage for this growth. So, if there is no regulation, if regulation is going to break down, here, this newly formed cells continuously grows and increases in size. So, like that growth is not there in a healthy person. If it is a cancerous person, that cell growth mechanism is totally break down. And uh, along with that cell growth, differentiation differentiation here the differentiation means for example this is one type of cell if the cell is going to change its structure like this now this process is termed as differentiation either like this either like this either like this whatever it may be so compared to this cell if the cell structure is going to change like any shape that process we are calling as differentiation so already we completed in spermatogenesis in case of spermatogenesis spermatid spermatid changes its structure like this once the spermatid changes its structure like this then this cell is termed as spermatozoa or sperm cell now this is also a type of differentiation Simply, if any parental cell changes its structure, that process is known as differentiation. Now, this differentiation process is also highly regulated in a normal persons. In case of cancerous persons, this differentiation mechanism is also break down. So, what happened? If the differentiation mechanism is going to break down, simply the body cells produce different shaped cells. Now, <coughs> cancerous patients exhibit cell growth and the differentiation mechanisms are of completely break down in case of cancerous patients whether in case of normal healthy persons this cell growth and differentiation processes are highly regulated and highly controlled if this cell growth cell differentiation mechanisms are of breakdown then the person's cells is termed as cancerous so cancerous patients cells there is no cell growth regulation and there is no cell differentiation regulation and their controls are also completely break down and along with that contact inhibition contact inhibition is also not exhibited by cancerous cells so what is this contact inhibition for example this is a epithelial tissue like this now this is normal epithelial tissue by accident or by wounds here some of the cells are going to damage because of accident or because of wounds some of the cells are damaged so here there is a loss of cells automatically the epithelial cells have the capacity to fulfill this empty spaces in our body now the surrounding cells they starts mitotic division continuously and uh, 
because of the mitra division the total empty spaces are filled filled with the newly formed daughter cells like this now this newly formed daughter cells once they touch with other normal cells this is other normal cell these are the newly formed daughter cells once this newly formed daughter cells once they contact once they touches with other cells of the body or other organs immediately what happened here the mechanism of cell division is going to stop the mechanism of cell division is going to stop that process is called as contact contact inhibition inhibition means stop contact touching when normal cells touches other normal body cells other normal body organs immediately the cell division process is going to stop that process is called as contact inhibition after contact inhibition these normal cells increases their size now these are all characteristic features exhibited by normal body person normal body if it is case if it is a cancerous then what happen there is no contact inhibition this contact inhibition mechanism is completely absent because of this for example these are the cancerous cells even though they touches other normal cells there is no stoppaging of mitotic divisions here the cells are continuously divides and divides finally increases their number so even though they contact with other normal cells there is no stoppaging of mitotic divisions because of this there is an increasing of body cells now finally they forms a group of cells now this group of cells we are termed as tumor they forms a new structure the new structures we are calling as tumors these tumors are forming because of there is an absence of contact inhibition by cancerous cells so if it is normal cells once the normal cell touches the other cell immediately the mitotic division processes are going to stop if it is cancerous cells even though they touches normal body cells there is no stoppaging of mitotic divisions because of that continuously they are going to divide and redivides and finally forms a group of cells and the group of cells forms a new structure that new structures we are calling as tumors understood up so cancerous cells does not exhibit cell growth cell differentiation is completely break down along with that contact inhibition is also not exhibited by cancerous cells that contact inhibition is exhibited by normal cells if these two mechanisms are completely disturbed then the cells are termed as cancerous cells because of these cancerous cells finally what happened in our body when the tumors are forming now these tumors are classified into two categories namely benign tumors and the second one is malignant tumors so tumors are of mainly two types the first of all benign and the second one is malignant already we know the meanings of benign and malignant why because in a plasmodium vivax already we know plasmodium vivax causes a type of fever called as benign tertian malaria benign tertian malaria benign means not dangerous and a malignant malignant means it is a severe serious type of diseases are termed as malignant and the normal diseases normal type of cancers we are termed as benign so first of all benign type of cancers their main characteristic feature once the tumor cells are formed all these tumor cells are covered with a layer all these cancerous cells they present at only one place where the cancerous cells are formed that all cancerous cells are present at only one place they are not transported from one place to other place in our body if the cancerous cells are located at one place the type of cancers comes under benign tumors benign cancers otherwise the second one is malignant tumors in this case what happens there is no protective layer there is no surrounding layer because of this the cells especially the cancerous cells they are uh, separated from this region and they enters into the blood circulation through blood circulation from one place to 
they are transported to other places in our body. See here, for example, in this place, tumor is forming. This tumor is known as malignant tumor. Now, from this tumor, some of the cells are separated. The separated cells are directly enters into the blood circulation. Through blood circulation, they are entering into new area. Now, this is normal body cells in other parts of the body. Through blood, these cancerous cells are transporting to other areas of the body. Once these cancerous cells reaches to the other parts where they settled and uh, after settlement, they also changes normal cells into cancerous cells. Now all these normal cells again modified into cancerous cells because of this here also a tumor is forming like this. So if the cells are, if the cancerous cells are transporting from one place to the other place through blood circulation, now such type of cancers are called as a malignant cancers, malignant tumors. So compared to benign tumors, malignant tumors are of very dangerous because all these cancerous cells directly enters into the blood circulation. They are transporting into the all body parts where they settle on that surrounding areas. They are changing normal body cells into cancerous cells. Like this, total body cells, maximum body cells are going converted into cancerous cells. That's why compared to benign, malignant cancers are of very dangerous. Now, all these cells, all these cells simply termed as proliferating cells, a mass of proliferating cells. Why? Because already we know the meaning of proliferation, proliferation meaning means production of same kind of cells. Production of same kind of cells is termed as proliferation. Differentiation means changing of their cell structures. If the cell shape is going to change, the process is termed as differentiation. If same type of cells are increases, this process is called as proliferation. So, <clears throat> this malignant cancer is a simply termed as the mass of proliferating cells and this type of malignant cancers exhibit uh, some uh, characteristic features. Those characteristic features are of, those are known as neoplast. Those are known as neoplast. Here, neo, the meaning of neo is nothing but new plast tumor. Once they reaches to the other part of the body, where they are creating new tumors, that's why those are called as neoplastic tumors. Malignant tumors are also known as neoplastic tumors. Next, such type of tumors, they develop angiogenesis. Angiogenesis. Say for example, angiology. Angiology. Nothing but the study of, the study of blood vessels. The study of blood vessels is known as angiology. Here, angiogenesis. Genesis means formation. See, for example, these are the normal body cells. For these normal body cells, blood vessels. Blood vessels, they are supplying nutrients and gases to these normal body cells. Already we know the main function of blood. It transports mainly nutrients and uh, gases to the tissues. Nutrients like glucose, fructose, ammonia acids, etc, etc. So the main function of this blood is to transport nutrients and as well as nutrients, oxygen to the tissues. Now this is in normal condition. In case of malignant tumors, especially what happened, all these blood vessels, they are supplying such type of substances to the normal tissues. Now here, these malignant tumors exhibit one of the characters known as angiogenesis. Angiogenesis means to this blood, to these cancerous cells, especially they are developing blood vessels. They require blood supply continuously. That's why these cancerous cells they are developing new blood vessels. New blood vessels to especially cancerous tumors, 
especially malignant tumors for these malignant tumors they are developing new blood vessels now this process is termed as angiogenesis why they are developing such type of new blood vessels because here continuous cell divisions are going on continuous cell number is increasing because of this they require energy they require gases because of that region they are developing new blood vessels to this malignant tumors once they develop new blood vessels maximum blood maximum blood that blood is totally filled with nutrients and oxygen all these substances directly enters into the malignant tumors so maximum nutrients maximum oxygen utilized by malignant tumorous cells because of this region what happened here normal cells they are not getting sufficient amounts of nutrients they are not getting sufficient amount of oxygen now already here food materials are there gases are there but they are not utilizing by normal body cells now this condition is termed as starvation starvation in simple terminology starvation is nothing but fasting fasting mechanism we are also regularly in exhibiting fasting weekly once or twice because fasting the meaning is food materials are available but we are not eating here also abundant food materials and gases are available in blood but such type of materials are not utilizing by normal body cells all these substances are utilized by malignant cancerous cells because of this the condition is termed as starvation so normal body cells undergo a condition known as starvation and next once the cancerous cells are separated from this tumor and they enters into the blood through blood circulation they reaches to the new body parts now this process is specially termed as metastasis metastasis simply the meaning of metastasis this malignant tumors are also exhibit one more process called as metastasis the meaning is cancerous cells slotted slotted means separated cancerous cells are slotted from the tumor and enters into the blood circulation through blood circulation they are reaching to the other organs where they creates new cancerous cells now the process is termed as metastasis so all these conditions all these characteristic features exhibited by especially malignant tumors that's why malignant tumors are of very dangerous <clears throat> and next carcinogens carcinogens already we know allergens what is the meaning of allergens the substances which causes allergy known as allergens similarly the substances those are responsible for the causing of cancer known as carcinogens so the carcinogens are mainly classified into three categories the first of all physical carcinogens physical and the second one is chemical carcinogens and the third one is biological carcinogens here the meaning of carcinogen is the substances which causes cancers known as carcinogens in which the first of all physical carcinogens again here physical carcinogens are classified into two categories one is ionized and the second one is non ionized ionizing carcinogens and the second one is non ionizing carcinogens here ionizing carcinogens examples are of x rays and uh, gamma rays once these rays enters into the body they causes they creates dna splitting they causes dna mutations etc etc so all these are of very dangerous once we our body exposed to the x rays continuously once our body exposed to the gamma rays continuously immediately that rays enters into the body and they causes cancers now along with that non ionizing example for this uv rays so all these three types of rays are comes under physical carcinogens 
and come to chemical carcinogens example is tobacco once we are chewing tobacco in the form of gutka once a person is chewing tobacco in the form of gutka the person gets oral cancer in that oral region epithelial tissue gets cancer if the person taking tobacco in the form of cigarettes now the person is taking cigarettes now by taking cigarettes what happened that smoke directly enters into the lungs because of that that lungs because of that smoke the person gets lung cancer so based on mode of abuse the persons are getting cancers if the because of this tobacco mainly oral cancer this oral cancers because of chewing of tobacco and uh, especially lung cancer this lung cancer because of smoking now these two are comes under chemical carcinogens simply tobacco comes under chemical carcinogen and the last one is biological carcinogens biological carcinogens especially viruses again these biological carcinogens are of class by into three categories one is viruses cellular oncogenes and the third one is proto oncogenes in which the first of all viruses for example this is virus once this virus enters into the body this virus have the ability to produce cancer in a receiver body once this virus enters into the body this virus causes cancers so such type of viruses are called as oncogenic virus oncogenic virus here already we know oncology study of tumors now genesis formation so cancer or tumor formed viruses cancer causing viruses especially termed as oncogenic viruses once these viruses enters into the body the body gets cancers now this oncogenic viruses consists of genetical material now this genetical materials are called as especially the genetical material of oncogenic viruses are called as viral oncogenes viral oncogenes small confusion is there especially cancer causing virus is termed as oncogenic virus why because they are causing tumors especially that oncogenic viruses consists of the genetical material especially that genetical material is termed as viral oncogenes viral oncogenes the genetical materials are known as viral oncogenes and the total organism is known as oncogenic viruses along with that in our body in a normal healthy persons in each and every cell some genes are present now that genes are termed as cellular oncogenes along with that cellular oncogenes proto oncogenes are also there especially for example this is normal body cell in that normal body cells inside of the nucleus genetical material is present in the form of dna in the dna some genes are in the form of inactive condition that inactive condition genes are termed as cellular oncogenes cellular oncogenes these cellular oncogenes are present in each and every organism healthy individuals but these are cellular oncogenes in the form of dormancy inactive conditions now these cellular oncogenes are also termed as c ants the short form of these cellular oncogenes is termed as c ants cellular oncogenes along with that cellular oncogenes some genes are also there known as proto oncogenes proto oncogenes these proto oncogenes are simply termed as p ants proto oncogenes now this cellular oncogenes and proto oncogenes these genes are inactive in condition once these genes are activated uh, then the total cell is going converted into cancerous cell so normally and naturally each and every body cell consists of p ants as well as c ants but all these genes are of 
completely in dormancy in i2 condition when these genes are activated generally once the body is exposed to the carcinogens just now i said once the body is exposed to the x rays or tobacco or gamma rays immediately what happen all these inactive genes are going activated once these act genes are activated automatically the total cell is converted into cancerous cell now <clears throat> once the genes are activated along with these genes our body cells are also consists of p53 genes p53 genes now the main function of this p53 genes if the person is exposed to the x rays or gamma rays immediately these cells genes are activated that activated genes immediately destroyed by p53 genes that p53 genes are also present in our body their main function is to control cancerous genes their effects if this p53 gene is also mutated or if this p53 gene is also damaged then the person is getting